Holy name of Jesus Parish, I would have loved to have been able to present to you in person, but unfortunately due to COVID-19 and the gathering restrictions, we have to make some alternate arrangements. But I'm so thankful that we live in the era where we have the technology today that I can come to you from anywhere on the planet, and I'm so grateful for the opportunity. For those of you who don't know, my name is Chris Bray. I'm a full-time Catholic speaker and musician. My wife and I have been married for almost 14 years, and we have five kids at home, and they're all girls. For the last eight years, I've been traveling full-time to churches and schools, giving parish missions and speaking at conferences and retreats. And it's been incredible to see God at work in so many people's lives. This is my hope and my prayer for the next 45 minutes that though we can't gather that like we normally do that God would use this opportunity and this time to draw us closer in relationship with him that the Holy Spirit would open our hearts and open our minds to receive him in a powerful way I am so thankful that you are here to join me in this there's a thousand other things that you could be doing and yet you chose to participate in this particular mission and let's open our hearts and our minds to allow the Holy Spirit to lead us to a deeper transformation. Let's begin in a prayer in the sign of our faith. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy Spirit, would you come? Would you soften our hearts to receive what you have for us? We thank you so much, Lord, for your grace, for your love, for your mercy, for how it is that you are at work in our lives, in all the things that we see and those that we don't. Lord, would you draw us closer to you? Would you allow us to see the things that we need to relinquish control of and to hand over to you? We thank you so much, Lord, for your love and for this time. Holy Spirit, would you change and transform our hearts so we can be holy like you are? In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. In the name of the Father, in the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, earth in the morning our song shall 
God Almighty, all my works shall praise thy name in earth and sky. Okay, so I have a question for you. Consider this. Is how do you want to be different at Easter from how you are today? I don't know. Maybe we don't really give that some consideration. I know in my own life, many seasons of Lent have come and gone, and I remained exactly the same. But how do we want to be different at Easter from how we are today? See, Lent is an opportunity that we are given. The church has given us the liturgical season of Lent as an opportunity to grow in our relationship with God and in penance and in conversion into a deeper awareness and appreciation of our faith. The word Lent literally means spring. And I don't know about you, but after this last year of COVID and after a long cold winter, I am ready for a new springtime of faith in my life. We have this practice in Lent in the Catholic faith where we willingly give things up, that we'll sacrifice something to God. Now, oftentimes this is met with kind of reluctance or resentment, like, oh, I got to give up meat again, or I got to give up chocolate. And maybe we don't want to do it. We have this resentment. But the reason that we do this, the reason that we give things up willingly and out of love is that we detach from the worldly things so that we are more able and capable to receive the spiritual things. It's not until we're able to detach from the world that we are able to receive all of what God has for us. This is the opportunity that we're given in Lent as we detach from the worldly things, as we give up things to God, as we offer and we fast and we sacrifice, that we detach from the world so that we can receive more of Him in our lives. We make room for Him. I, I think the Lord is also using this time to be a time that is very revealing. Revealing the things that in our life that we need to let go of, the things in our life that we're holding on to, revealing maybe anger or bitterness or resentment, fear and doubt. God's using this time to reveal within us the things that are not of Him and the things that He wants for us to surrender, to give up so that we can receive more of what He has for us. Let me ask you another question. What if you decided that you wanted to make a change back when COVID happened? Like I remember about a year ago when COVID was introduced to the world. And after a couple of weeks, I realized that, okay, this isn't going anywhere quickly. Like this is going to be around for a while. And I decided that I didn't want to be the same person coming out of COVID and coming out of the lockdowns as I was when I went in. I decided that I wanted to make some changes in my life that I wanted to have a better faith life, a better prayer life. And one really simple change, and a lot of people are going to think this is really silly, but I really wanted to learn how to do a handstand. I had never learned how to do one before. My kids, they don't know how to do handstands. They spent all day long flicking their legs up in the air, and I, I, I decided that I wanted to learn how to do one. Now, this sounds like a really silly example, but honestly, it's true. And I decided that I was going to learn. And so I remember the first day, I attempted my handstand for the very first time. And, and this was something that like, I probably should have learned as a kid, but I never did. I never had the opportunity. I just, I never tried. And I, I remember flicking my legs up in the air and they're flailing all over the place like this and they're going every which way. And I probably fell down a few too many times, but each day I would try a little bit more and a little bit harder. And after about a month, I realized that I was able to hold a handstand. And, and this is just like one really silly example in our lives of like, if we're given the time, if we're given the opportunity, what kind of changes would we want to make in our life? I think a lot of people use New Year's as an opportunity to make changes in our lives. And so maybe we make New Year's resolutions about like, okay, I'm going to eat more healthy foods and more nutritious foods, or I'm going to exercise. Well, Lent is our opportunity to make these changes in our life. Not necessarily for our health, and which is a good thing, and not necessarily to be more time efficient, which is also a good thing, but 
to allow our lives to be more orientated towards God, to give up the worldly things so that we are more capable of receiving what God has for us in the spiritual things. See, I, I didn't want to be the same person coming out of COVID as I was when I went in. And so maybe we can have a similar mentality towards Lent. Like, how do you want to be different at Easter time this year than you are right now? And I got to tell you, in my own life, there's been many years, year after year after year, where Lent has come and Lent has gone, and I have remained exactly the same. But God doesn't want that from us. God wants to produce a transformation, a change by the power of His Holy Spirit in our hearts so that we can be who He has called us to be. And the question is, are we willing to make those changes? Are we willing to give up, to relinquish control of things that we're holding on to in our lives so that we can, are more capable of receiving the spiritual things? It's sort of funny, like people often talk about, okay, if I had unlimited resources, if I had all the time in the world, I would learn how to do this. Or if, if I could do anything, if I could choose how I'd spend my time, I would spend it on this. <laughs> Here's the thing. We've been given the time. We've been given the opportunity. But the question is, are we willing to offer that to God? Are we willing to allow ourselves to be changed and transformed? I think during this time that God is using it to reveal a lot of things to us. And maybe we've had this tendency of being hostile or resentful. And we've seen anger or fear and frustration and doubt, or whatever it is, creep up in our lives. We can allow this time to to make us bitter or to make us better. We can allow this time to make us hostile or to make us holy. But how do we do this? Well, it requires us to lean into our faith in Jesus Christ, empowered by the Holy Spirit. Because we can't do this on our own. We need God's grace. And maybe we're really struggling. Maybe it seems difficult because the sacraments are limited during this time. Maybe we feel like the sacraments are out of reach and we're really questioning was, how can I keep my faith life alive during this time? What does that look like? Here's the thing, just because mass might be canceled doesn't mean that our faith life is. Over the ages and even now across our planet, there have been long durations where people were unable to go and receive the sacraments. And it was in those times the Catholics Christians around the world needed to lean into their faith all the more. If we're unable to go to Mass or we're not able to do the Stations of the Cross or, or participate in the sacraments, maybe we're asking ourselves the question, was like, am I doomed? Like, how am I supposed to fuel my faith during this time when the sacraments might be out of reach? What does that look like? I think this is actually a providential opportunity for us, especially during this season of Lent, where we can work on our intentionality, our desire, and our fervor in the Lord where we can really pour our hearts out to God and say, God, I need you now more than ever in the absence of the sacramental graces. Lord, the sacramental graces that maybe lay dormant in my heart, would you stir them up? Would you bring them to life so that I can be renewed and refreshed in you? The sacraments are given to the church as a gift, as outward signs for us to receive God's grace. And they are the normative and ideal means to receive his grace. But that doesn't mean just because they're out of our reach that we are lost or doomed. Because though we are bound by the sacraments, God is not. God can work in extraordinary ways when we have a heart that is oriented towards seeking after him. Like all across the world, over the ages, there have been Christians and martyrs who have had to endure long durations without even receiving the Eucharist. In Japan, for example, tens of thousands of Christians lived for 250 years without once celebrating the Mass. Like, they had to gather in secret. And all that they had to go on was a distant memory of a grandmother's grandmother who once had an encounter with a priest. And yet their faith was alive. It wasn't until missionary priests were allowed back into the country that they found 10,000 Catholic Christians awaiting them with zeal and with fervor, and with a desire to seek after God. Just because mass was canceled for them for 250 years didn't mean that their faith was canceled. Stories like that really puts our faith into perspective for us to recognize just how blessed we have been on our journey in North America in our faith life that we've had the sacraments at our disposal basically whenever we want and that we can so often want to use this as an excuse to not have to give it our all in our faith when Lent is actually the opposite. Lent invites us to sacrifice. 
invites us into discipline, invites us into willingly and out of love offering our whole selves to God. And this particular Lent might look a lot different than other years because maybe the sacraments are out of reach. And in this time, all the more, we need to lean in our faith in Jesus Christ, empowered by the Holy Spirit, so that he can produce a transformation within us. A similar scenario to the Christians in Japan happened in Korea in 1784, where a servant of God missionary preached the gospel to them. But after they left, the church was run completely by lay people for decades until a missionary priest returned and found 4,000 Catholic Christians waiting for them, and only one of which had ever met a priest. And other examples of great heroic saints that have gone before us, like for example, in the 19th century, St. Mark, who was an opium addict, who was denied the sacraments by his confessor. And though he was denied the sacraments for 30 years, ultimately offered his life, died a martyr for the faith for what he believed in. God enabled him to do that by his grace in an extraordinary way. That we might be bound by the sacraments, but God is not. And this is an extraordinary time for us. Maybe we're struggling in our faith. Maybe we're wondering, how are we going to be fueled in our faith? God isn't abandoning us, but God offers his grace to us. And the grace that we've already received in the sacraments that might lay dormant in our lives, he's inviting us to allow that grace to change and transform us so that we can have our faith be fueled and thriving. Like so many Christians that have gone before us who had to endure long absences from these sacramental graces as well. The sacraments are the normative and ideal means of us to receive God's grace. But here's the thing is that though we are bound by the sacraments, God is not. That God's grace can work in extraordinary ways when we let him. And if we feel that we are doomed and we are lost because the sacraments might be out of our reach beyond our control, then maybe what we're doing is we are putting our faith and our trust in our own selves rather than in God's grace. Maybe this is an opportunity to appreciate how blessed we've been. Maybe it's an opportunity for us to rely and to dive into our faith and to allow that to come alive in our lives in the absence of being able to receive these sacramental graces. See, how did these so many Christians across the ages fuel their faith in their times of trial and suffering? They put their faith in Jesus Christ, empowered by the Holy Spirit. They surrendered their life to God. Ultimately, we need Jesus, and we need to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. St. Paul reminds us in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, And so it was with me, brothers and sisters. When I came to you, I did not come with eloquence of human wisdom, as I proclaimed to you the testimony about God. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I came to you in weakness with great fear and trembling, and my message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power, so that your faith might not rest on human wisdom, but on God's power. Maybe we realize that we've been relying on other people to fuel us. Maybe to save us from feeling bored or unhappy or like we lack purpose. Maybe we've been leaning on things like Amazon shopping sprees or Netflix or or fitness or like all of these good things. But here's the reality is that none of those things can save us. Only Jesus can. Like, don't get me wrong. All of those things are good, but fitness is not going to save us from feeling empty. Going on an Amazon shopping spree is not going to fill the void in our hearts. Netflix can't distract us enough from the feeling of loneliness. Only Christ Jesus and him crucified can save us. When we ask ourselves the question, how do we want to be different at Easter from how we are today? The only way that that's possible is by putting our faith and our trust in Jesus Christ, to be empowered by the Holy Spirit and to offer our lives, to fully surrender to him in this time. We give it, we give it all to him because only he can save us. When Jesus walked on this earth 2,000 years ago, he asked his disciples a very important question. He said, who do men say that I am? And they came up with these different answers. Some say Elijah, some say John the Baptist, a prophet. And he said, no, no, but who do you say that I am? Who is Jesus to us? See, I think that question rings true 2,000 years later. Who is Jesus to us? I think C.S. Lewis so well articulately describes the three possible conclusions that we can draw from this answer, that he's either a liar, he's a lunatic, or he is Lord. 
And see, here's the thing is that if he is who he says that he is, then we are who he says that we are. Is he the Lord of our life? Are we willingly and out of love handing over our lives to him? Are we allowing him to chisel away the things, the imperfections and the things that we're holding on to so that we can surrender those things to more fully receive what he has for us? This is the opportunity that we've been given this Lent. This is what Lent is all about. As Jesus calls us to conversion and to remorse and penance for our sin, he wants for us to be transformed by his grace. The Israelites, they got a little distracted. As God freed them from the bondage of slavery under Pharaoh, as they fled Egypt on their way to the promised land, God led them out into the desert and he miraculously parted the waters. He gave them the miraculous bread, the manna that fell from heaven. He made water flow from a rock. He did all of these miraculous and incredible things and yet still they got distracted. Because when Moses went up to the mountain to talk with God one time, they didn't know when he was going to come back. And they forgot. They forgot all about all of the ways that God had blessed them, all of the ways that God had saved them and where he was leading them to. And so they came up with a brilliant idea. They said, here, here's what we're going to do. We need a new God now. We are going to melt down all of our gold and we're going to fashion it into a shape of a calf. And we're going to bow down and we're going to worship this golden calf. And this is a great idea. Everyone should do it. <laughs> but here's the thing. That golden calf couldn't save them. And I think so often in our lives, we fashion for ourselves these golden calves that we think are going to save us. And maybe that's Netflix and maybe it's popularity or maybe it's how many likes we have on social media or maybe it's Amazon shopping sprees, but none of those things can save us. Only Jesus can. Only Jesus can transform our hearts so that we can be who he has called us to be. Will we hand over our life to him? Will we surrender to him? Jesus says, anyone who wants to be my disciple must deny himself daily, take up his cross, and follow me. Following Jesus, it's not necessarily the easiest path, but it's the one that has the greatest reward. Are we willing to take up our cross, to journey, and to follow where Jesus leads us? Are we willing to offer, and to sacrifice, and to fast, and to pray? Are we willing to offer our lives to him? This is the opportunity that we've been given this Lent. Do we really believe? Have we really put our faith and our trust in him? You know, Jesus says, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you could tell the mountain over there to get up and to move. Like, do we have the faith that Moses had as he was leading the Israelites out of Egypt to the desert? And when they came across the sea and they didn't know how to cross and they could see that the Egyptian army was at their heels and they could see that they were getting closer and closer to them. They didn't know what to do. They didn't know how they were going to cross the water. They didn't have any boats. And yet Moses had the faith to extend his arms and God parted the sea and they crossed through. See, do we have that kind of faith? Not in our, ourselves and in our own power and ability, but do we have faith that God can do the impossible, that God can do the extraordinary. This is the kind of faith that he invites us to. I want to invite you to join me in a time of prayer where we open our hearts and our minds to encounter and experience and receive God into our hearts and that the Holy Spirit would reveal to us the ways that maybe we're holding back and the things that we need to relinquish control of. Let's pray together in the sign of our faith in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord God, we thank you and we praise you for who you are, for the love that you have for us, for your grace and for your mercy. Lord, we ask as we come before you that you would allow us to surrender our hearts to you, that we could be changed and transformed by your grace, that those sacramental graces that may be dormant in our lives, Lord, would you bring those to life by the power of your Holy Spirit? Would you allow us to not hold anything back from you, but to fully surrender our lives to you? All of our fears and our anxieties, our doubts, all of our gifts and our talents, Lord, we hand them over to you. We praise you, Lord. I've been holding back every single Your 
your love won't forgive my past, Lord, I can receive all that I am. This is my full surrender. God, take my life forever. part of our life as we recognize the sacrifice that you made out of love for us Lord would you fill us with that love fill our hearts and our lives allow us just to be overwhelmed overcome as we empty ourselves and as we receive all that you have for us Praise you, Jesus.
times I failed you How many times I needed to come back to you How many times you gave me Open your arms and praise me surrender our hearts to you hand over everything that we are holding on to Lord would you just change and transform our hearts so we can be who you've called us to be would you give us the grace to surrender the things that we are holding back Lord that would you just allow us to be consumed by your love and we thank you Lord for the love that you have for us that it chases after us that you pursue us in such a way
Thank you for joining me in that prayer. And I want to just extend a little bit of a challenge for you. You can call this the homework from this parish mission. Is What was God saying to you in your heart? What are some of the ways that you might be holding back from him? I know each of us in our own lives, we, we like to hold on to certain things as security blankets, things that we're not too comfortable letting go of. And God might be inviting us to let go of them, to surrender them to him so that we can receive what he has for us more fully. In Lent, we focus on three main elements. And I think these three things, prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, are going to revolutionize our Lent this particular year. This is how we can fuel our faith, even when the sacraments might be out of our reach, when we give our heart and our soul, when we give it our all to these three things. The first one is prayer. See, prayer is the time that we have to converse with the Lord, where we can hear God speak into our our lives, where we offer him what's weighing on our hearts. And as a father myself, there's nothing I love more than to hear my kids tell me about their day. When my kids are in distress or when they're hurt and they come to me, they want to tell me everything. Like as a father, I love to hear from my kids. And I know that our father in heaven loves to hear from us as well. And he wants to hear what's weighing on our hearts. He wants to hear our struggles. And he also wants for us to be silent so that we can hear him speak into our lives as well. When we take that opportunity, that sacred silence, where we allow him and we give him the room and the space to be able to speak into our lives, that is transformative. And I know so many people who often say like, I just want to hear the voice of God speak to me. And we forget that he already has through the scriptures, through the Bible, the word of God is God speaking to us. And that though those words may have been spoken over the course of thousands of years, and they may have been spoken long ago, or that those words are living and alive and applicable to us today. And in the moments of times in my life when I've been discerning or when I've been longing to hear God speak to me, when I flip open the pages of scripture, God speaks to me in relevant to my life in that moment. He wants for us to hear from him in his word. The second thing is fasting, that we As Catholics, we have the practice of willingly giving up something for Lent that we offer as a sacrifice to God. And now maybe we're thinking like, I'm going to give up vegetables because that's a great idea. (laughs) And I've tried that over the years. It doesn't usually work too well, though, because God invites us to hand over the things that are close to us. Maybe it's handing over social media or maybe it's chocolate or maybe it's coffee. Whatever it is, the point is that we hand it over to God out of love. Like if we're just being resentful and bitter, like, oh hate having to do this, then it's probably not going to have a transformative effect on us. And I'm reminded of athletes who often give things up because they have a goal in mind of what they want to achieve. Like Olympic athletes, they have to wake up early in the morning. They give up sleeping in because they have a goal in mind, because they're dedicated. They give up eating junk food because they need the proper nutrition to fuel their bodies. And they give up their time so that they can train and be disciplined because they recognize the value in in their willingness to sacrifice something for what they can obtain. And here's the thing, in our faith life, what we can obtain is by the grace of God, a transformation in our hearts. So what are we willing to fast from so that that might be possible for us this Lent. And the third thing is almsgiving. And this is where we tend to the needs of others, where we give to the poor or even those that are around us. And I got to tell you, now more than ever, people are in need of hope. They're in need of the gospel. They're in need of our help to be the light that we're called to be to them. And that could be as simple as just writing a letter to somebody or making a nice card or sending a text message or praying with them over FaceTime or whatever it is that we can meet people where they're at and that we can be Jesus to them in their time of distress and in their need. Let's go out of our way to bring the gospel to them. How do you want to be different at Easter from how you are today? It starts by surrendering our lives to God. Are we willing to do that? Are we willing to devote time in prayer? Are we willing to read scripture? Are we willing to learn about our faith with podcasts or videos? Are we willing to devote time out of our day so that we can offer and sacrifice and fast and we can offer that to God so that he, by his grace, can change and transform us? Are we willing to do that? Let's be all in this Lent. Let's not let this Lent be like every other where we remain exactly the same, but let's allow our hearts to be changed and transformed. I invite you to pray this song with me. Holy Spirit, come set us on fire with your love. Pour out 
Spirit, would you just pour out over us right where we are, right in this moment, as we open our hearts to you. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Fall on us. Sing this with me. ignite within us a desire for you, a new flame. Would you put within us just a zeal and a fervor to live out your will in our lives, God. We praise you, Lord. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I want to thank you for taking the time to journey with me during this parish mission. I know there's a thousand other things that you could have been doing and you chose to participate in this. And I want to thank you for that. I want to encourage you on your Lenten journey that there might be times when we stumble. There might be times when we get distracted like the Israelites in the desert. But that's okay because we believe in a merciful God, a loving God, who's just waiting for us with arms stretched out, who's longing for us to return to him. 
And so let's do that. Let's keep our eyes and our focus on Jesus. If you're looking for more great resources this particular Lent, I want to invite you to check out my website. I post regular videos about our faith as well as Catholic music. I also have a faith community at patreon.com slash Chris Bray, where people can support my ministry so that I can continue to provide faith resources like this one and music and talks and so much more for the people that need it the most. So you can check that out at patreon.com slash Chris Bray. Thank you so much and God bless you this Lent. betrayed he broke bread and when he'd given thanks he broke it and said this is my body which is broken for you do this in remembrance of me we receive we receive the body of Christ broken for all we receive, we receive His precious blood. Precious blood poured out for.